Oh, welcome. Greetings, my relatives. Welcome to another show, Eagle and the Condor. And today I have Matsatsin Acosta, and that's Dr. Matsatsin Acosta. And he's a man of knowledge. He's a keeper of the time in terms of what's referred to as the Aztec calendar, but it's a Mexica calendar. Well, Matsatsin Acosta will explain that and the knowledge that was acquired, my relatives, well over a thousand, two thousand years of accumulated knowledge to where that calendario or Mexica calendar is now not only seen as a calendar per se of seasons, but it's in fact a computer that has now been analyzed, still being decoded, but much of the symbols and the direction of that calendario has been and is being defined such as by people like Matsatsin that we'll be speaking to now. You may be wondering in the meantime about that calendar. It's a computer and it's based uh, by and large on the universe and that includes the, the stars, the constellations, the different galaxies. And I mentioned that this was acquired over a thousand, perhaps 15, 2000 years ago. So that means that these individuals or these Tlalatinimis, I believe, it's called Matsatsin will be correcting me, but these men of knowledge, and perhaps there was women there as well, but they recorded all of this at night. So these were considered a night league or society of intellectuales, intellectuals that passed on this knowledge over time to achieve this magnificent calendar or computer that is now situated in Mexico City at the Museum of Anthropology, I believe, there in Mexico de Efe. And I must say that it was long buried, my relatives, by the indigenous peoples, Mexicas, and different tribal peoples of that era. And it was rediscovered or unburied in 1790. So Mazatin has a lot of this knowledge, some of which I I'm talking to you about it as well. I've known him for many years. I have the great pleasure of knowing Matsatsin from Fresno. We're both from Fresno. So it's really a great pleasure to engage with him in this profound programming of knowledge of the Mexica calendar. Don't forget to tune in, tell your friends on Sundays, four o'clock here at BayVac, locally in San Francisco, cable, public access, channel 29. You can also hear us on radio, myself, KPFA, on Wednesdays on Bay Native Circle. That's from 7 to 8 p.m. And live streaming, kpfa.org. And also I rotate there with Janine Antoine, Eddie Madrill, and Morningstar Gali. I also have another radio segment on KPFA Friday nights on La Onda Bajita. I have a segment there, half hour, sometimes an hour segment. It's called Across Indian Land. And that show is brought to you the second and the third Friday of every month. My relative but here now, before we get into all of this, and I just wanted to say that there's a new book out, an indictment indeed against UC Berkeley. As some of you do know, many of you don't, but they have a repository of over 9,000 Native American remains. And they're not the only ones, but they are the least in support of the federal government's effort to have those uh, remains returned to the appropriate, the proper people in those areas and in those regions. And that is by federal law. In 1990, the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act was passed. It's supposed to be implemented. So here we're talking about 33, 34 years later, and still the University of Berkeley is holding on to these Native American remains. And we really need to write to the chancellor at that university to get on the stick and enforce that federal law that they've been very reluctant to pass. But my relatives, that university is not the only university across the United States, for example that has Native American 
remains. In fact, I'll go here to the statistics I have or these numbers. You see, I say statistics, those Native American remains are not statistics, but they're in terms of numbers here. And here we have Harvard University has over 6,200 Native American remains. The American Museum of Natural History has 1,800 Native American remains. The Department of Interior of all people, and we're talking about here, the Secretary of Interior is Deb Howland, uh, Native American, Laguna Pueblo from Nuevo Mexico. And here they are holding over 3,000 Native American remains, my relatives. The question you have have to ask yourself, those of you that are listening and watching the program, is what university or college or museum or whatever institution near you or in your town has that, please start questioning and talk to them about the federal law of 1990, the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, referred to as NAGPRA, the acronyms for that federal law. But overall, there are 617 institutions in the United States that have reported having Native remains. And they've had to report this under that federal law of 1990. But my relatives, when now we're talking with those 617 institutions, we're talking about a total of 210,000 Native American remains. You know, that's it's quite a body count, and of that, only approximately half have been returned. This is since 1990, so UC Berkeley's got to get on the stick and start moving on that. And I understand that this is the chancellor's there last year at UC Berkeley, so everybody, let's see about writing to the chancellor at UC Berkeley and ask her to have those bones released immediately, my relatives. And with that, I just wanna say that there's a professor, former professor there at UC Berkeley, and that is Professor Emeritus Tony Platt. And having spoken with Tony Platt several times, he's also mentioned that he has a, a new book out and it's really, like I said earlier, it's an indictment on UC Berkeley. And the title of the book is The Scandal of Cal. And the scandal of Cal, my relatives, including white supremacy and the miseducation there at UC Berkeley. And it'll be out in late August, the book itself. And Tony Platt is a writer of now 13 books and one book that is very interesting, intriguing, and one I would recommend to you in the meantime as a primer, if you will, to the scandal of Cal, that is uh, UC Berkeley. It's called Grave Matters, and uh, that book was published in 2011. And uh, it focuses on the Northwest of California, particularly with the Yurok and of course the Karuk and many others. And according to them and many Indian tribes in that Northern area, they said that many of their bones have been plundered, have been taken. We're talking about grave diggers here that transfer a lot of these findings, if you will, to these types of university, but all without their consent. So there's some heavy violations here. You know and I know how UC Berkeley has been romanticized as the light of the West Coast, and you know, like Yale and Harvard and all these other universities are the light of the East Coast. Well, the move East due to manifest destiny in the 1800s and into 1900s, there was a push West. And it was in fact, President Abraham Lincoln in the 1860s that issued land grants to uh, developers and institutions to go out and seek land, take it, so consequently, fast forward, UC Berkeley is a recipient of that land stolen from the local Bay Area, Moekma Ohlone peoples here. And of course, the Moekma Ohlone peoples are not federally recognized, nor state recognized, nor do they have a land base, but they are still here among us, my relatives. So UC Berkeley has got to come to terms with this past. Particularly, I want to add the anthropology department that was so glamorized, romanticized in the early 19th century with Krober, I believe it is. And he had 
found Ishi, the last Yahi Indio of Northern California, and, and he really blew that out of proportions. But all the time and the bones that they were collecting, not just from California across the country into the institutions, but they were going to Egypt, they were going to Mexico, they were going to Peru and just stockpiling these bones. You can read it all in Tony Platt's new book that I mentioned, The Scandal of Caleb, but they literally hoarded and boxed a lot of these bones, but, you know, beating their chest of all the treasures that they have. And of course, that feeds into the interests of those that invest in institutions like that. So tune in to that book when it comes out, The Scandal of Cal by Tony Platt, my relatives. And then finally, I just want to say another thing, my relatives, that last month in June, the 23rd, the Northern Circle Indian Housing Authority and at the Consolidated Tribal Health Project in Northern California, they held a special event to commemorate the 500-mile spiritual run, which is, I don't know if our engineer Falcon, cameraman, can capture this T-shirt here, but uh, I'm proud to wear it myself. But it was to close the spiritual run here in Northern California for the last 20 years, my relatives, which was help started by men and, and women in the American Indian movement, Dennis Banks among them, who has long passed, but they held a special event to close that circle 20 years. They'll be starting up again very soon. We'll keep you posted on that. But on that occasion, on June 23rd, there in Redwood Valley in uh, Northwestern California, they held a special honoring and recognition to our good friends, spiritual leaders both, and that be uh, Fred Short of the American Indian Movement, California, and also to our good friend, uh, Wounded Knee, Dale Campo. Fred Short was not able to make that occasion, my relatives, that June 23rd. And I have to say that prayers are asked for Fred as well as Wounded Knee, but Fred has dialysis about once or twice a week. And uh, he's been on that for several years now, but Fred Short helped bring spirituality including myself, to many of us were aimless, if you will, and helped set us the course. Now we realize that aim is a direction. And my relatives, Wounded Knee, was there and he was honored and awarded. And he also received a letter of recognition by the California Attorney General himself, Attorney General Banta acknowledging Wooden Knee for his dedication, his commitment, and his work with young people. And I have to say that Wounded Knee is coming along in age as well, my relatives, and he needs our prayers, like all elders, having respect for them. So he's very active, he's on the road a lot. So we, we hope to see him once again at many of our activities in and around the Bay Area. All right, having said all that, my relatives, I hope Matsasin isn't bored uh, <laughs> with it, but I'm contrary, yeah. I, I, I do want to uh, now present to you my very good friend, Matsasin Acosta, and I would say Dr. Mm. Matsasin Acosta, who has received an honorary doctorate from Tamalipas University. In, in University in Mexico, Northern Mexico. And Masatin, who, as I said, known many years, and we grew up together in Fresno. We're both veterans of the military as well, coming home. And that's about the time we met in the early 70s Probably. in <laughs> Fresno. But I don't know, were you also in Vietnam? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, but you were in the military yes. itself. Yeah, so that's about when we met. But Masatin, I wanted to invite you, you know, you're among those... I won't say an unsung hero right now, but you're unrecognized in many places, but you're being recognized in many other important <laughs> places and circles for the knowledge that you bring to the public and to the community at large. And I'd say by and large, it's not only for their own awareness 
and knowledge of health and well-being and the universe, you know, but how to walk a better path in nature and having respect all our, our living relatives, whether it's the four-legged, those that crawl, those that swim, or the winged, that you have that kind of knowledge. And now as a doctor of this understanding of the calendar, the Calendario of Mexica, you want to share with people the importance. You tell them what time it is. Although we know that we're faced with a lot of calamities, I don't know if that's also foretold in some sense in the computer of the Calendario, but please, if, if you would explain to us, you know, you've been to the highest levels, as I said, both at the United Nations, I must say, bringing your knowledge and understanding and, and bringing that awareness. And we have videos that we will be presenting today further down in the program with Dr. Matsatsin, about three or four videos leading up to a larger video that further explains the topic of the Mexica calendar as we'll briefly talk about today. But please, Matsatsin, if you would introduce yourself and correct all the errors I made on this one. No, none at all. Tlaxo Kamati, we mea. No yolo paki ikuak ni mesita. I want a new Masatsin, Masatsin Azteca Yolokali. Tlaxo Kamati, I want a wekwali tonali, kwespali. And teko witontli, I want a matlakli se akat. No chantlakat. I said, uh, my homeboy, Nashan Plaka, my homeboy, Tony. Uh, no igno, more than a brother, okay? More than a kind of, you know, we, we, you know, your brother and my brother and us, you know, and the familias, man, we just had a good time, you know? So we're here to share. And uh, first, I want to extend my sentiments and my, my pesame for you and your family, you know? Recently, you know, some of your familia, your brother, your primo, mm -hmm. have uh, recently made that, that most important step, right, into transformation. Okay, we say in Tumitlan, and, and I'll start there, you know. Uh, first, I introduce myself, Masatsin, Casa da Costa, right? And uh, Masatsin is my, my traditional Mexican name, you know. But uh, not too long ago, I was also very honored to be given an Anashanab name, you know. And it's Ogishida Nudin, okay? And that's been about four years. I don't use that name all the time because I'm learning to use it, learning what it means. I want to be respectful and I'm being taught better ways to present myself in that respect. But nonetheless, it was an honor. But from our perspective, uh, like I said, dealing todavía with the situation, with my, my, my humble uh, uh, sentimientos, you know, as a carnal, you know, and um, we know that, that uh, meat plant, we call it. So when they talk about meat plant, unfortunately, like you said, a lot of the history has been changed or misunderstood. And it could have been by design, but also by default, you know. So to me and, and to us, it shouldn't matter so much. The thing is, how do we get over that and bring it back together? So Miklan, I want to talk about Miklan just real quickly. Mik means transform, okay? And Tlan means abundance, like Masatlan, okay? Masat, deers, abundance, Tlan, abundance of deer. Akatlan, abundance of, of uh, reeds. Tenochtitlan, abundance of, of, of uh, tunas upon the stone, you know. Now, Tlan means abundance, like Aztlan, okay? Abundance of As, A-Z. What does that mean? Harmony, okay? So Aztlan is a place like here today. We've been here with my carnal Nane and my, my brother Kiraul and, of course, Falcon and yourself in, in this place of harmony, you know? Like time has passed really fast, and we're doing a lot of things trying to get the message out, oh. you know? And, um, but Mitlan is a place of abundant transformation, you know? And that's where our, our relatives have gone now, you know? And, and uh, I, I, I talk about that sometimes because also, like my own son, our dearly beloved, we say, hey, we greet them in the morning when they walk with the sun to bring us light and warmth, you know? Because the mission continues, you know? So in that respect, I want to say that, uh, that regarding, regarding the Calendario Azteca, you know, I, I, I still call it the Calendario Azteca because that's how people know it. And it's known throughout the world, you know, universally known as the Aztec calendar. And, um, but then we have to come back to the point, like I said already, Aslan, right? Aslan, it comes from two words, As, A-Z, and Tlan. So Tlan means abundance of harmony, okay? So Azteca, okay, Aztec, also same thing. 
tec is tecat, a person, and of what? A Z, harmony. So an aztecat is a person who becomes an instrument of harmony, okay? Because and, and, uh, um, that, that's what it's about. So in reality, the way that I see it, our abuelos were not Aztecs, okay? They became Aztecs, okay? Because you, you, you kind of must become an Aztec. So, so or, or return to the rhythm of harmony and stay an Aztec. Nowadays, as you know, many, many people throughout uh, these Khalifas, you know, and all the, everywhere, their child are being born and they're given their names now according to the calendar systems, you know. You know, so that little guy, man, you know, that, you know when they call him Ocelot, it's because he's born on the day Ocelot of the Jaguar, you know. And mom and dad now know about it, right? Because the biggest mission that mom and dad had was that our children never forget their potentials and their capacities, you know. That's it. Don't forget your potential and your capacities. Because from the potentials came the responsibilities. But first they had to know it. So they had to have an identity. So what we call the Aztec calendar, right? And it's been called many things, even called the Mayan calendar, right? It's, it's, uh, I call it the next logical step to the Mayan calendar. The Mayan calendar brought us to a certain point. And from there we had to continue. And it continues. But before the Mayan calendar, right, we already had Tolteca, we had Olmeca, you know? And in other words, all of these calendars, come together and they combine, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Aztec calendar is the culmination of the calendar systems, okay? As, as, they, as once they were refined. It was refined in the ancient books and the codices, okay? Now, unfortunately, as you know, and most people know also, that you could see total annihilation of our ancient knowledge, written knowledge, <clears throat> at least in the Valley of Mexico and throughout of our ancient books, okay? But nonetheless, the ones, the few that remain, and the few that remain, and one very special one remains, and it's in the Vatican Library, the Apostolic Library of the Vatican, you know, and that one, you know, we're, we're working with your, with your help, you know, in West, and many other people have joined us now for the repatriation of that, of that, of that sacred book, okay? Because what, it, so what does it mean? It means that after thousands of years, across thousands of miles, by thousands of peoples, Okay, the knowledge came together, you know, and it culminated, you know, in the ancient books, the, the codices, the written books, okay? And then from there, 500 years later, or who knows how long, much later, boom, the calendar was made, okay? So the stone itself is, is the synthesized uh, product of the whole books, okay? So when we see, um, for example, uh, the, the pyramids, you go to the pyramids of Quetzalcoatl, you know, in Totihuacan, right? And, if I have life and health, I'll be there on July 25. Because on July 25, the sun will be directly above Teotihuacan. And we've been there for the past 15 years, except the two years that was closed because of COVID. We've been there receiving the sun in the Zenith Passage, the second Zenith Passage of the sun. What that means is that, so to confirm our count, you know, if we put our calendars together and make a calendar, so we're confirming our count, know where we're at on the days. So on December, excuse me, on July 25, it'll be the day of the condor. And we'll be in, in Totihuacan in front of the Pyramid of the Sun that we've been for the past 15 years for the purpose, okay? Because like I said, it's a Zenith passage, right? So there's no shadow. You know, you're standing on your shadow on that day in the, 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 the sacred site. So for the purpose of, of proving beyond a shadow of a doubt, the relationship that exists between the sacred observatories that we call pyramids, right? and the, the Aztec calendar and the ancient books, okay? There's a correlation so incredible right there that you can't deny that it's there. Because right there, once we leave the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, well, on the calendar we have Quetzalcoatl, see? You know? And then we go to the pyramid of the sun, and then uh, under there we deal with also in the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, by the way, I'm sure you've seen it, it's got Tlaloc, right? You know, the, the symbol of the, of, the, of the rain, you know? Not the rain god, right? But the rain itself, Tlaloc. It comes from Tlali, earth, and Okli, a drink, what the earth drinks, Tlaloc. And it's got the symbol of Quetzalcoatl. So throughout the, the ancient books, you're going to find Quetzalcoatl, you're going to find Tlaloc. You know, they represent times and space, and, and space. And the elements that they are. Yeah, yeah, the elements. And then, uh, <clears throat> like, for example, um, if you find that there, and then you come to the Pyramid of the Moon, right, which is up the road, this road they want to call the Road of the Dead, but it's really the Road of Transformation. <laughs> it's a transformation. We walked up that road many times for the past 15 years without, without missing one, except the COVID you know, shutdowns. 
And, um, mm-hmm. but we've been there, you know, to, like I said, to bring the information and to start having people in the areas start taking responsibilities again for doing that. A lot of times people think, people think that, well, cause my sister's coming to do this and that. No, it's not, huh? Like I tell people, uh, you're not coming over here to see me. <laughs> I'm going over here to see you because you're at the right spot, you know? That's what's really happening. So don't look at us coming over here. No, no, you're there and you have the opportunity, you know? So this year, you know, um, after, after we, you know, we come, we come from, uh, from, the, from the, the expert mechanism, right? Um, on the rights of indigenous people. In Geneva, we're coming back to Mexico City. Uh, that's the UN, United Nations. The United Nations. Sponsored body. Right, yeah. right, where we'll be doing, you know, working with you, to, you know, to make a presentation. But we'll come back to uh, uh, Chicuco in, in, um, in Hidalgo. It's right next to the great sacred city of Tula, you know, and it's in a real high peak mountain there. And we're gonna be holding the ceremony there in Chicuco. You know, yeah, this is part of, of what we're gonna be doing there, there in, um, in, the, in, the, in Chicuco. You know, this is, this is a high, big peak, like I told you, we'll be right on top of this one on, on, on this particular day. But we're gonna begin from there. We're gonna start going the next day we will be in, 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 uh, in Tula Hidalgo, you know, where the big giant statue that they call the Atlantis, because the sun is gonna be right directly above us, see? So what we're doing is we're walking these sp- spaces. The following day on the 24th, we'll be at the Museum of Anthropology, as you said, in the Chapultepec Park, where the original stone is at, mm-hmm. you know? And we've been there every, at, oh man, that's the most incredible place in the world. We'll be there before the stone itself, you know, discussing where we're at on that stone, what day it is today. That'll be the day of the eagle. So when we're in, on top of the mountain, it'll be the day of the reed. In Tula, it'll be the day of the jaguar. And then the day of the eagle will be in Mexico, you know? And then we come back and, and we'll be in Totihuacan, right? And so I think that, that these places, what they'll do is they'll show us, they'll show us that the sun is there even now after all these times in the made those pyramids, right? You know? So on the day of movement, all in, okay? Then we'll be, we'll be in Mexico City, okay? So we'll be in Mexico City on, 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 on the day all in. And yeah, and, uh, and, and, and check it out. So we're on the day, we're gonna start right here on the day of the reed, that'll be Shikuku, the day of the jaguar, that will be, we'll be in, Tot- in Tula, Hidalgo. The day of the eagle will be at the museum, right, in Mexico City, and we're in front of, this, the, in front of the beautiful stone. The beautiful- so how do these numbers work, yeah. this way? Yeah, they're, they're going counterclockwise. Uh-huh. Okay, so then on, on July 25th, we'll be in, we'll be in, in uh, Totihuacan, the Pyramid of the Sun, and on July 26th, this is so important, the symbol Olin, okay? Well, check it out. This symbol is this whole symbol right here, it's right there, okay? This is all in, that's what's carved in the face of the calendar. The second passage of the sun over Mexico City, shoom. Okay, Zena's passage. And believe me, it's gonna be the biggest ceremony to date, okay? You know, because now we have ability. In, in 2012, we had over a thousand dancers there celebrating, cause it's the foundation wow. of Mexico City. But after that, they closed it down and we, we couldn't be there at all. Just to give, the viewers, an idea in San Jose, there's a gathering, included here in San Francisco yeah. with yourself, having uh, Mexica days yeah. like that. And to see uh, people dressed in the Mexica outfits yeah. in yeah, San yeah. Jose, for example, there's mm. hundreds. Right. Uh, and here you say over a thousand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Plumes, dancers. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's Mexico. Celebrating, Tenochtitlan. celebrating. You know, it's Mexico, Tenochtitlan. They come from the whole yeah. country that are coming dance. Mancecilia, and let me ask you a quick question because we're going around the circle here. Right. This is the 20 days? Right. One, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. But I wanted to just back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You said that this calendar, this calendario, this computer here, so to speak, is a culmination of other right. calendarios. Right. But I wanted to ask you, did those calendars come from like Guatemala? Did they come from Honduras? Did they come from El Salvador? Or, or they were all chiseled out and no, 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 uh, in no, no, Mexico no. itself? No, 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 no. After thousands of years, across thousands of miles, right, by thousands of people, okay, uh, of careful, patient, and respectful observation and study, okay, the knowledge was put together, okay, 
And, and um, I, I had the honor and the pleasure of being in Tiwanaku in Bolivia, right? You know, at, at the, oh, way out there at the beginning where you see what they call the, they call it the Inca cross or whatever you call it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's really Venus, symbol of Venus. It's called Chacana, actually. It's got a nice name, Chacana, you know? But it, this right here is actually Venus. You know, this is Quetzalcoatl. So now we're sitting way down there in, 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 in uh, Lago Titicaca, in, in, in Tiahuanaco, and these amazing ancient places. They began down there, the, the knowledge and the study. And they came and, and, and Lake Titicaca in northern Bolivia. In northern Bolivia and in, in, in Peru. Yes, yes, that's an ancient, ancient yeah. lake. Yes, well, please. That's where they came, that's, that's where they came out with the, with the first, the knowledge, you know, okay? And their stuff is older than ours over here in the Valley of Mexico, okay? And they they came out with an incredible understanding that that no, the Earth was not the center of the universe, you know, but on the contrary, right there with the sun, you know, Inti, and that's why their mission was to come to Inti, and they brought that out, boom, and they did everything according to that because that was that was their main thing. And if you go today. You go to, to Peru, Ecuador, and you see a, a bus will be driving by, and you think you're looking at the Aztec calendar till you get close up. No, nope, it's not the Aztec calendar, but it's a calendar as well. And they got the sun in the center, Inti, okay? And that's what it was. But they didn't end there. The knowledge moved and traveled, you know? And, and, and it's, so it's not just from Guatemala and Peru. It's also from up here, from up north. The knowledge, they had to be sitting in those kibas. They had to be, they had to be standing over some way far away to be able to get all these measurements to put it together. And then they came together and they put them in the ancient books and the, the codices, we call, they call them codices now. And they put them in the ancient books, see? So this ancient book is older than the calendar. The calendar is the youngest thing that was made. In fact, it was the last thing that was made, recorded. It was carved according to this date that's up here. The date is a date uh, 13 read, is the date 1479. That's only 13. That's when it was completed. 13 years, 13 years before the invasion, you know, of our side of the world. 1521 or 1519? 13, you know. Cortes and the 14, Spanish yeah, conquistadores. Yeah. No, no, uh, in, invasores, okay? Invaders. Yeah, because uh -huh. we don't call them conquistadores, you know? Yeah. But they're just, they're invaders. So, so but the year 13, uh -huh. you know, uh, 13 read was the year 1479. Like I said, only 13 years before the invasion of our side of the world by our brothers from the other side of the world, right? Because they're all sons of the sun and the earth. No, we got no problem. But nonetheless, but they put it together. I know <clears throat> that's the most amazing thing that I'm so happy for, that they finished the work, okay? But they couldn't be Aztec until they finished the work, okay? Until they found how to become an instrument of harmony. And that's what that's about. So when we find someone's birthday today, right? And we correlate it to the calendar and to the ancient book, the ancient codices, we can see in which 13 day period one was born, in which, in which uh, day one was born. And we find the meaning behind those symbols and that's your mission, okay? And that's your potential. It's not you, it's not a horoscope, it's not good luck or bad luck. It's not you're gonna do this or you're a Jaguar, you're gonna be around running like a Jaguar. But it says, these are the potential that were present when you took your breath of life. So you should take advantage of that, you know? You have access. With the stars that lined up you, to yeah, you have calculate. Access, yeah. You have access to that. Tabulator. Now, they did all that tabulation and all the quinn during those thousands of years, like you mentioned, you know, from tip to tip, you know. Does that include portions of knowledge from past civilizations, quote unquote, like even the old Mex in the Yucatan, a little knowledge Tor no, thrown in there, the Toltec? Totally, totally. And, 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 and I believe you can name them from here in the north, too. Oh, you know, yeah, because when I met a lot of the grandfathers and the elders that I met in the Native American, the American Indian, you know, uh, arena, let's call it, you uh -huh. know? A lot of them say what? Oh yeah, our grandfathers come from down there. Our ancestors are from down there. A lot of the chiefs, you know? Because there was communication. See, the Aztec calendar is a proof that there was a communication <laughs> relationships, national and international, amongst all the peoples on this continent. And, you know, that's why you find feathers, right? You find macaw feathers up north. There's no macaws up north, you know? You know, in, in the cold, you know? But yet there was, there was trade, you know? So in other words, there's evidence that there was trade between the peoples, you know? And what did they trade? Knowledge as well, okay? Yeah, there's even clans of Makkah. That's right, and they come from down south, you know? So in other words, wow. and you know what? I've heard, I've heard myself that some people have heard their songs down south, you know, right? When they go south, they hear songs. Hey, that's not like our song, you know, or things in that, to that respect, you know? But the whole thing is, like I said, it's a culmination, you know? 
So we were here at, at, the, at the Condor in, in Totihuacan, and then I'm talking about Olin. It's always, always the day Olin movement when the sun is above Mexico City. So in other words, it never fails, okay? And that's our mission that we've been doing. So uh, we call it the reintroduction to our common root, okay? One root, you know, okay? And then the next day is flint. The flint is like the tongue, see? It's the word, profound, pointed, and sharp. Well, I was born on that day of the flint, <laughs> okay? But that day, the sun is over Malinalco, the house of the medicines, okay? The next day of the rain, the sun is over Tepoztlan and Amatlan. And they call that Amatlan de Quetzalcoatl because they have the story of Quetzalcoatl in that area, you know, the, the one that followed those teachings, right? But look at this, the day of the flower, Chochil, okay? That'll be July 29. So on July 29, if we have life in house, we'll be at the day of the flower on the, uh, at the house of the flower, Chochicalco. So in other words, the calendar is moving according. If you come back 40 days, 40 days, guess what? It's gonna be, it's gonna be June 21st, which was the beginning of summer, Fipatli, and it was crocodile. And that day, the sun came on top of, uh, of uh, Zacatecas, okay? In fact, Zacatecas and, and Viticuta, you know, the house of the, of the peyote, the home of the peyote, and the sun goes directly above in that space, you know? And Zacatecas and Viticuta, but in other words, so 20 days later and 20 days more, and you're at the house of the flower in Chochicalco. So what are we doing? Yeah. We're, we're, we're seeing um, astronomically, archaeologically, historically, you know, you know, scientifically, proving, you know, the, the relationship between the calendar, the ancient book, and the sacred um, uh, observatories, you know. How, how do they conclude the 20-day cycle? The 20th, to have accumulated how many months uh, well, well, for the year? You know, in, interesting now, a few years ago, when you first invited me to the UN in 2015, remember, 2016, we had a gathering there, and we brought people from the Condor Nations, right, and from the Eagle Nations, right? In fact, we even helped uh, uh, the Donna Brave Bull come in, you know, and God rest, you know, rest his soul. You know, we, we, she came in and, and, and presented at that time, too, you know? So, so since then... When we brought people from Peru to the one grandfather, and I told that grandfather, I said, grandfather, you know, I believe that uh, the Aztec calendar is the culmination of all the calendars, you know? And he goes, ah, my son, that's a lot to say, right? Everybody wants to be number one, you know? And I said, no, abuelo, maybe you're number one. I go, we're number last. Okay, <laughs> we're not number one, but we're the last. You know, it's the finished product is here, you know? Culmination of the knowledge that's here they didn't come just from Mexico or just from that area. Like I said, they had to be listening to people up north, down south to put it together, you know? And that's important because that showed that we have relationship, like I said, and congruence as we came together, we worked to make time a reality for us, okay? So then the grandfather, guess what? About six months later, he sent me a, a, an article that he wrote, okay? And, he's, and, he, and uh, he said, Amalta, he called me and he says, uh, hermano Masatin, he starts showing me the breakdown. So from way back then, they had already broken, divided the heavens into 20 pieces. Okay, from way back then, okay? You know, okay, and, and that's what I, I, I realized, oh, okay. So, so from, from this image, somehow from this image that I showed you before, the cross, that they call it the cross over there. In Bolivia? Yeah, in Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, all those areas. Oh, okay. From, check it out, from Colombia all the way down. All those people right there. We call that the condor nations, okay? Those are the condor nations, okay? Because from Nicaragua, north, okay, these are the ego, uh, ego nations, see? And that's what a lot of times people don't understand. A lot of times, you know, people, people think that the, the ego nations is the USA, you know? But the idea is from Nicaragua, the original name of Nicaragua is Nican Anahuac. It's an Aztec name, Aztec language, Nahuatl language. And it means, mm -hmm. meaning it's up to here is Anahuac. And Anahuac was the name of the, or the recognition of the territory, north. Uh, the Mexica. Yeah, or, well, Mexica comes way later. Mexica's uh -huh. in the Valley of Mexico, uh -huh. the Tenochtitlan area, you know? The, the, re the reason Mexica is important is, is because Mexico, Tenochtitlan. In other words, that was the headquarters, okay? That was the headquarters of the Confederation, okay? So that was Mexico, Tenochtitlan is, is important, you know? Yeah. That's today's capital, Mexico City. Mexico City. Tenochtitlan. AKA Mexico City, right? And just real quick, mm -hmm. you learning the language, the Mexica language, mm -hmm. the Nahuatl language a bit, did that help you also further comprehend? Totally, 100%, 100%. I could not have comprehended 
I'm not a, I'm not a, a Nahuatl, I don't speak Nahuatl, no you know, no, no, because no, I wasn't fortunate enough to have that beautiful sacred language, you know, be taught to me, you know, right. mm -hmm. and the ones who did speak it, well, they were, they got in trouble too, you know, so, so we have to go back and study and learn, you know, at least that, but I, I can't say that I'm fluent on the calendar system mm -hmm. and what has to do with calendars, so I had to learn that, like I said already, Miklan is not the place of the dead, but the place of abundant transformation, you know. I had to learn the Quetzalcoatl is not the feathered serpent, but the precious serpent. Because Quetzal is not feathers, it's precious. And then it's, so now we need the language. In fact, I got to a point in Guerrero one time when I was in, in Guerrero, Chipancingo, and what they told me, we can't teach you no more in Spanish, you know. And then it's, <laughs> you know, the words you gotta learn are not there, you know. So sometimes there's not even words in English or Spanish that can truly capture, you know, like, like, no no chantlaca, no masatzin. And I just said, how you doing, my homeboy? You know, I'm your brother, Masatsin, you know? So now it's, it's more of like a concept, but it, it was so important. So right now we can tell all our listeners and visitors, if you got a pop, you got a dad, grandpa, grandpa, or grandma, that speaks the language, man, por favor, tape them, record them, you know? Maybe not for you, maybe your child, your grandchild is gonna wanna know what the words were about. Cause if we can't understand the language, you know? You know, our grandparents can't talk to us, just like in English, right? A lot of us, you know, our abuelos, they're not speaking English, you know? So we just say, hey, abuelo, and that's it. Hey, abuelo, and that's all. You got to say for abuelo. That's not cool, because abuelo has so much to give you, you know? So much knowledge to share with you, but you couldn't take them. Because they took Spanish away from us in the schools, right? First they took away our original languages, they forced us to do Spanish, I am Mexico, whatever. Come here, they take that away from you, force you English. And then what happened? When you're a teenager, you can't even speak Spanish. But yet, some of the other children from other nationalities, well, they're taking Spanish in high school and tennis, and they get the bilingual jobs and stuff, you know? So, in other words, language is important, and every language is good. I got no problem with Spanish or French. I wish I knew more languages. Every language is good. But our language, Nahuatl, but it's an ancient language. Nahuatl is a term that means harmoniously speaking, or the sound of running water. So when you speak Nahuatl, Latoli, speaking Nahuatl, you're speaking harmoniously. And that's what it's about. So if we're gonna speak, it's gotta be harmonious. So on the, like on the calendario, right? You know, we got the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, the elements that give life. I mean, it's so simple if you look at it like that. Because right now, unfortunately, a lot of times when we gotta give a talk or a teaching, we gotta begin by apologizing, you know, to all the young people there. Because you know what? We're not responsible enough to, to defend those elements that give life, the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. Can't even give a child a clean, a clean glass of water today. You know, but if we teach them to respect the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, the most basic elements of our calendar, they will be able to give their children clean water someday. So the whole thing is to work to make things better, okay? Because that's the original traditional way, you know? Uh, you were talking about, in fact, my brother Nani, when he comes to talk, he's gonna be talking about that. He's gonna be talking about regeneration, about fixing and making things well, you know? When, when I had the opportunity, you know, in Bolivia, I learned because, you know, we have an organization, right, called the International Council of First Nations that we established in 2018 at the UN. And some of our members are from Bolivia, you know. And when we were down there, uh, we learned the difference between what they call regular justice and indigenous justice. See? So according to regular justice, what are they going to do? They're going to charge you, they, you know, you got to go to court, you got to do this. It's about punishment, you know. It costs you a lot of money, and even the people got hurt. They don't get nothing fixed. You know, they're just punishing you for doing something. And indigenous justice is restorative. You know, you know what? You got to make that person whole, you know? So I'm not going to lock you up over there to, you, could, you never can make them whole. Two different concepts. Yeah, so those concepts, you know, are the concepts that we want to take into our thing. So all our work that we do now, all our mission that we have, you know, it's about harmony, it's about unifying and restoring, restorative, you know? So, so th th that's part of our deal, you know? The, the other thing that, that uh, like, as you know, uh, my main push right now, my main drive for the past couple of years, in 2019, we did, uh, in our intervention at the UN, it was uh, to send a letter to the Pope, you know, uh, and a notice, okay, N not a demand or, a, or anything like that, just let him know. This will be Pope Francis today. For Pope Francis today, uh, yeah, Francisco Pope Francis, and, and, and the Vatican, the Holy See, as they call it, mm -hmm. to send him a letter, you know, I asked all the people that were gathered with us today at the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues in 2019, you know, to send him a letter advising him, you know, 
that, that, that we have decided to begin the repatriation of our sacred books, you know, according now to the, to the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, you know, certain articles, you know, say that there's mechanisms that can help that happen, you know, and that the states are, are obliged or required, you know, to follow through together with indigenous people for the return, like what you were talking earlier, the return of the sacreds, you know, which could be, you know, the original sacred re remains, you know, or it could be our sticker, you know, instruments, okay, of knowledge. And so, in one of those, we've gotten quite far with that, you know. Later on, in, we, we held uh, through, our, through our council, we held uh, three commissions on truth, right? Decolonization and reconciliation, you know. We don't mind reconciling and let's get together, but first we gotta decolonize. And part of the decolonization is what you said earlier, the knowledge of ourselves, so we can remove, whether by design or, de or default, you know, the system that has put us in that predicament, you know, by returning to our own knowledge, right, and recognizing our own potential. And then hopefully the organizations, like many organizations we have today, Tony, you know, from throughout, if they can really focus uh, unity, you know, to start lifting the people up, right? So that was one thing we did. Well, guess what? We got a message, you know, from... Uh, a response? There was a response, okay? First message we got on the first commission that we had, guess what? Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, you know, from Columbia University, an advisor to the Secretary General of the UN. International lawyer. An economist to the max. He came into our commission, into our Zoom meeting that we had. And he heard the people speaking. And he said, I am in solidarity with you, just cause, you know? So we put in his hands the letter to the Pope that he delivered to the Pope, you know? On the second commission, passed the third commission, we got a notice that they have been advised to take it to the Papal Curia, okay? So we've already been advised to take it to the next level, okay? So in other words, there has been some response, you know? And uh, hopefully, hopefully in, in this trip that we go now, coming to Geneva, you know, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to also to meet with certain peoples there that might make it more, you know, feasible on how we get the message across. Because now, remember I said, it's a thousand of years across thousand miles by thousands of people. It was a culmination of all this knowledge that made those sacred books, okay? And so that book being in the Vatican Library, but being the spirituality of all these nations, it's not a good place to be, okay? So we're asking, we're asking the Pope, and as a sign of good faith, that you wanna work with all the indigenous peoples, right? He's been to Africa, right, with the you know, African people, he's been to Bolivia, with, we gave him some feathers, he just came from Canada, right? With all the indigenous people he wants to work with, you know? Well, as a sign of good faith, you know, you know, return to us that sacred, sacred book, okay? The most sacred book that we have. To me, I feel responsible for it because I've been using it in my work for the past 20 years, you know, over 20 years. But also in December, I got to go to, to Oaxaca, right? To Montalban, to Mitla, to Osampa, to where they, at least the artists or the Tlaquilos came from there, you know? And we got their support as well, okay? Because they have a, even more of a right to demand that it's hereditary to them. You know, so these are part of the things that we have. And must have seen if I can interject. Yeah. It's a long run, right? Because Moctezuma's Copili is in Austria and there's efforts to retrieve that as well, slow going. But on the international level, there are moments where there is an exchange, yeah. including MRIP. You mentioned MRIP earlier, the right. expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples. Just last year, they were instrumental in retrieving Yaki artifacts and items right. that were in Sweden or some right. Scandinavian yeah. country, return them to the Yaki people right. in Mexico and other small efforts. Sometimes there's Kachina dolls being on auction in Paris yes. that yeah. people discover and that happened make a lot. efforts to yeah. return, you know, in different ways. But there was that pillage and plundering that went on, you know, during that time, all across the world. In fact, there is a major return of these items back to the rightful people, right? As well, with a lot of resistance. So, but I want to get back to the calendar yeah. itself, if I can, yeah. please. Aside yeah. from those efforts, because we will be showing a video, several videos of your right. progress, bringing awareness. But back to the the calendario, the calendar itself, because in the Gregorian calendar, we have 30 days, mm -hmm. February is 28 or 29, but mm -hmm. we have 30 days and 12 months. What's the cycle for this and how did that 
come about in its meaning. I do want to say one thing before I get back into the calendar, see? Yes. Because uh, also, because believe me, the repatriation, you know, of that sacred book that they call today the Codex Borgia, okay, um, is very super important because, it's, like I say, it's the culmination of all the people. Is this what the you Pope know? and the Vatican is holding? Uh, th that's what the Vatican Library is. is that you're trying to retrieve? We're trying to help in the Efforts. repatriation. Uh -huh. Okay. Know? And like I said, mainly because of the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It's already there now, you know. Uh -huh. And like you said already, many things are already returning. Things are already happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. So so in the process, this last, um, the, my last presentation here at, at, at the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issue, th this year, Chief uh, Yonaguska Holloway, right, from the Lenape, uh, um, from the Len Lenape, Delaware people, you know, so he invites me to his house and uh, he asked me to, to take a position in, in their organization, okay? The organization is called, uh, it's called FANA, F-A-N-A. -A. It's, um, it's called the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of the Americas, okay? And um, they're very, very doing a lot of work, good, good work, you know? But he asked me to take a position and um, they agreed to it. And the position is called, um, it's, it's called Cultural Attaché, okay? for outreach and the repatriation of antiquities and artifacts, okay? So, so that's, that's a petition that we have now with the Federation, okay? So that's why it's very important that we get together with other peoples, other groups, you know, that are working on this repatriation issue. Because like I said, everybody in their own neighborhoods, they might have something that they know that needs to return to their homes, you know? And so we call it the return of the sacred, you know? That was our, that's what we call yeah, this project. Good one. You know? And, and at first we started talking about the, about the calendar and our stuff, but then, you know, with all the information that came out a couple of years ago about, about what happened, you know, in all the boarding schools and all the churches in Canada, all those young children, you know, remains that they found, sacred that they found, well, then that became the return of the sacred, see? So there's a lot of things. That, so the return of the sacred is now. And it would be whatever sacred to you or to someone, your people, you know? So I think that we can all work together. But, so, but the main thing, like remember, is harmony and, and bringing people together. So this is not a, a, a I call it, it's not a nasty thing, you know, it, it's, it's not a Maya thing, you know, and, and it's not an Indian thing, you know. It's a human experience towards personal transcendence with, with global consequences. Because I know by watching my brother Nane, you know, and watching you and, and watching Raul, you know, even my brother here, Falcon, my young brother, I know that one person can make a difference, you know. You know, one person can make a big, big difference, you know. So each one of people listening to us, that one person is the one that's going to make the difference we need. You know? But anyway, that's what I wanted to, you know, share with you because uh, that's our mission that we have, you know. And so we, even if it's just good wishes and prayers, that, you know, that always helps, you know, get no. us there and back. But on, on the calendar system, as you mentioned, you already, we already showed the 20-day cycles, okay? So... In a, in a solar year, there's 365 and a quarter days, right? You know, that's why we have um, years of 365 days and one year of 366 days, right? The leap year, because they took a quarter day from each of the three years before, and they added to this one now, and it's a whole day. So every four years, the Gregorian calendar comes back into alignment, <laughs> really, you want to say? And then it, every year, it gets back a quarter of a day, six hours, you know? Well, the grandfathers knew that, and they actually brought it to the present. So not only did they divide the, the, the time in 20-day periods, 18 20-day periods, okay? That gives us 360, right? Like, like the, the circumference of the circle, right? And then uh, a little small period of five and a quarter days, so 365 and a quarter. The five and a quarter days are called nemontemi. Those are the last five days of the year, okay? But they're real special days, you know, and they're separate. They got a separate count. They're not in the same system count. So they have a separate uh, in, in, uh, count. And those five days and a quarter, in 52 years, those five days will be 13 days. I, I mean, 52 days. And, um, and, and, um, and a quarter of a day in, 15, in 52 years will be 13 days more. Okay? So when you add the, the 13 times 20, right, it's going to give you 260. So in other words, you get the full amount of the gestation period of the human being, okay, in the calendar system, all right? So the 20-day cycles moving 18 times, that's the moment of the earth, right, around the sun, okay? 
But the 13 day numbers, brother, the Nemon, uh, the Tonal Powali, they call it, that's our number, the human being, okay? So if they tell you you're only a number, yeah, you're a number. Find out what number you are. Because once you find out what number you are on this calendar system, you can see what 13 day period it belongs to. And what are the potentials in that piece of time? So that's what it's all about, you know? So once again, we have the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, the four elements of life. If we didn't teach more than that, that would be plenty to sh young people to get them to understand, to respect the elements that give life, you know? These are the elements that give life, the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. Then we got the 20 day cycles. Okay, they all begin all the time right here in front on the day of the crocodile. And it's like an evolution. So we have the day of the crocodile, the wind, the house, the lizard, the day today, we're in the day of the lizard today. Tomorrow the day of the serpent, then there'll be the skull, the deer, the rabbit, the water, the dog, the monkey, the herb, the reed, the jaguar, the eagle, the condor, movement, the flint, the rain, and the flowers. A lot of times people ask, what animal am I? I said, I don't know, tell me about yourself. But there's not all animals, you know, okay? There's concepts, there's ideas, there's constructions. So of the 20 images that they have right here, right? In a couple, there's almost everything that exists upon the earth, you know, even concepts. So they're not animals. And each one of them is just a piece of time with qualities like this. The mind calendar, the same 20 day period, the same meaning behind the day signs, okay? Because it's all a con uh, one, one work, okay? Now, where they took it to the next level, from the codice that we're, that we're after, the codice Borgia, in there, very important because it's totally a pre-contact codex, okay? Ancient. But in that codex, they broke, broke it down even more. They have all the 20-day periods in that codex, you know, it's just the same sequence that we have here. But they, and they have the 13-day cycle that I'm talking about, okay? But they went one step further. They also found that every day they divided into 20 pieces. So in other words, a day is divided into 20 pieces of time, which means there's 72 minute segments, you know, 20 of them in a day, okay? And that's how they did it, right? So every day has, has, has uh, 72 segments, and these segments are divided by four, okay? So each one is called, it's worth 18 minutes. As you're talking and breaking it down, uh, yeah, uh, my mind is getting all digital. It's getting digital. Digitalizing me. The day is activity. My goodness. Oh, oh, but please you. go ahead. I'm telling you. Okay, so right, so right here, right here in these images, these are two serpents. The head is right here. The mouth is open. There's faces inside them. There's another one here. Okay. So these two serpents that are here, they represent thirteen thousand years each. So it brought us to the twenty-six thousand year cycle that the Mayan calendar came up to, or not, not that it stopped, but that it described the 26,000 year cycle that happened December 21st, 2012, okay? So it's on here, okay? So from the, so what I'm trying to tell you is from 26,000 year cycle symbols down to 18 minutes as on this calendar system, okay? But that's, you find that in the ancient book, okay? But you can, fig you can figure it here as well, okay? So, so each one of these days has 20 pieces of time in it. Each day has 20 pieces of time. And every 18 minute segment was guided by one of the symbols of the days. So it's got the quality of whatever it represented. Okay, so in time, now I know it might be a little confusing, okay, but we brought this to, to, to effect. Okay, first of all, we did it in, in Durango. In Durango with my daughter, my daughter when she was in, in preschool, okay, we, we practiced it there in Durango in preschool. Right? And, and then we practiced it in New Mexico at a, at a, at a junior high school, right? In a, in a summer program, right? Where we divided the pieces of time, showed the students how the time was changing. And not only that, not only that, there's, there's, um, there's five groups, I mean, four groups of five images that represent six hours and then another six hours. And as those times are changing from, from, so each one of these, my brother Tony, can be considered 72 minutes. And there's a 24 hours right here, okay? But each one of these, the first one was for creativity, okay? So the first 72 minutes time of the system, creativity, and then activity, and then reflection. Reflection will always be here in the corner. And then activity and creativity. And once again, creativity, 
activity, reflection, activity, and creativity. And then go again. Creativity, activity, reflection, activity, and creativity, and creativity, activity, reflection, activity, and creativity. What I'm trying to say is that there's times in the day that is more propensive for certain types. So what we did in the schools, we told the teacher, hey, how about if you change your curriculum a little bit to correspond to these particular times of the day? And you know what? Boom, they did it. And it wasn't a Chicano study class or an Indian study class. It was a biology class, okay? And the teacher gave upper division biology stuff to incoming freshmen, you know, okay? But because they got together, they formed a team. We told them, you can't copy from each other. Don't cheat. I go, but you got to help your brother, okay? And we'll become a team and work together. And every one of them just, and then we got them to write what they thought about how they liked this education. And they surely did. So our hope was to always, to be able to come into the schools, you know, and make it part of the curriculum. We never, we never had that opportunity yet to this day. That, that's very incredible to me, you know, that to this very day, we still have not really, you know, they still want to like bring us in to do a presentation or something happens. But we, we, want, we, we want to see the results of learning these things. I did get an opportunity over there in, uh, in Salinas, you know, in Salinas, I, I did do for one semester, we taught an after school class, you know. We started an after, after school class on the calendar system. We call it a reintroduction to your cosmic identity and sacred responsibility, you know. And it made a big difference, big difference in the students, the student body, to the point that even, uh, even unfortunately, you know, in Salinas, there was a lot, a lot of violence, a lot of violence in Salinas, you know. And this one year that I was there, in the three high schools, there was a shooting in each one of the schools that took out some young people, you know. So we put together a, a plan to, to, to do a mural, you know, and have each one of the schools participate in that mural, you know. And, and, uh, and we actually got the mural. It's under Highway 101 on Alisal in Salinas. It's been there since back then, you know, okay. And, and um, not missed with, you know. But, but the whole thing is to bring all the young people together to understand, you know, the potentials, you know, that are, that are, that are in each given day and in each person. Because here's one last thing that I'll say about this, you know. Uh, and, and that is that, uh, the, once again, it's not a horoscope, you know. Myself, I'm born in the year of the house, Cali, and the day of the flint, Tekpat, okay. But I'm not a Tekpat and I'm not a house, you know. But the meaning behind it, the home, a refuge, and a house of thoughts a safe place for reflection and regrouping for the comprehension of all living beings. That's my mission. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta try to get to that point. Why? Because I have potentials that exist in the piece of time that I was born in. And then the, the flint is a tongue. They call it the word profound, pointed, and sharp. But it's not pointed and sharp to chop up the people around me. It's pointed and sharp to dig and find the root of the truth, okay? With a profound method of study and analysis to truly comprehend things and then produce enduring concepts. In other words, wow. And I say, what? Me? Charlie, not you, but time, okay? So in other words, it's not me, it's a piece of time. So what does that mean? That if I learn or if my pop knows and my pop guides me, like I said today, young people are guiding their children in this way. They'll guide them so they never forget their potential, you know, and they have an identity already. So once we got the identity, from the identity and the sacred books, we can find what is the potential behind that identity and that becomes a responsibility, okay? So when a child was born, Right? If it's born like on a day like today, Quespali, you know, part of his time, part of his name would have to do with the lizard today, the Quespali. Okay? And then, you know, on the ceremony, to pick him up and to the four corners, right? Yell out his name, you know? Everybody knew who that little guy was, you know? And as he's growing up, all through his life, everybody can tell him, hey, nah, that's not the way Quespalis are, you know? It's like this, like that. So it was true that a village raises a child, you know? And everybody was uncle and aunt, you know, because they were all part of the familia, you know? And, and, and I believe that that's what we need to come back to again, you know? And the message that I said earlier about Quetzalcoatl, right? Precious knowledge, precious twin Quetzalcoatl, you know? Precious knowledge. Tesca di Poca, consciousness and memory, okay? Tesca, you know, the mirror and Poca, the smoking of the mirror, consciousness and memory. Huitzil Opochtli, okay? Um, it comes from Huitz, which is um, a thorn, okay? Opochtli, it means ones who come from the south, and they call them, that's what they call them, the left-handed hummingbird. But it's not the left handed hummingbird. He's actually the sun. We see the is a winter solstice when the sun is born like a hummingbird and starts moving, okay? But it represents the internal will, okay? Quetzalcoatl, knowledge and wisdom. Quetzalcoatl, consciousness and memory. We see the the internal will to move you. And now, once you got this, then you can have Quetzalcoatl. 
and Quetzalcoatl means precious knowledge, you know. And, and, and they call that also, also the opposite, they call that chipe totec. Okay, chipe uh, means shedding, and to, our guide tech. Our guide helps us shed our own skin, you know. In other words, all these concepts are in here, you know, and, and it allows one to, to try to walk on this calendar system, you know. So we tell people, you know, we're not trying to change anybody's ideas or anybody's religion or anybody's uh, ancient knowledge because we all have it in our veins and our blood and our genes, you know. You got to respect it, protect it, share it if you like, you know. What we're trying to say, of all the cultures in the world, one culture is very famous for keeping time, you know, recognized as the most precise system ever made, you know, that's what they say, okay. So let us tell you what time it is and then do your dance, you know, right. And then do, and we'll, we'll try and get everybody into the rhythm. That's what we call it, returning to the rhythm of time. You know, oh, and that's what that is. And that's what that is. And on that note, my relatives, I want to thank uh, Mata Srin. And as he said, if what he says can make a difference, even one individual, then he has indeed succeeded. Mata Srin, I know you have a website for people to go to, to know more. And for our, our viewers, our, our listeners, you may want to consider this a Crash Course 101 on knowledge of the Mexica Calendario in understanding for uh, health and well-being. And I hope Masachin convinced you in him substantiating the validity of this internationally known calendar or computer. Yeah. And I dare say that NASA had made a comment on this several years ago. Maybe people are going to look this up. But they said that the calendar is so accurate, it's just few seconds off the Nassau time. Well, that's why, that's why our, our, our website is real simple. Aztec knowledge. Okay. Uh -huh. Aztec there you go. Can you spell that, please? Yeah, yeah. A-Z-T-E-K-N-O-L-O-G-Y. One more time. You know, A-Z, like a Z, right? T-E-K-N-O-L-O-G-Y dot com, C-O-M, and then a slash and clock, C O L. CK, it'll take you right to our clock because we actually have a clock moving in 18-minute 18, 18 segments on our website. And you can come in there anytime and see what time it is, what day it is, and also follow it along. If it's the day, for example, the today's day the, of the, the lizard, tomorrow's day of the serpent, today's day of the lizard, it's about the maternal womb, you know? It's about the mother earth, it's about medicines and plants, you know? So people use that sometimes to guide them through that day. The whole thing is the day is going to fulfill its mission. So let's work with the day, okay? like that. Machachin, Casas, Acosta, I want to thank you very much for your journey here to talk to us. And I hope our, our viewers and our listeners got a lot of this. And you are considered uh, foremost knowledgeable in this. And uh, I want to thank you uh, for the quality presentation you provided us. No, oh, and my relatives, we're going to be listening out to watching some videos of uh, Matatin in action. And so let's tune in on that. Stay tuned. Thank the grandfathers and the grandmothers and the ancient ones and all the energies that give us life. I thank um, Ometeo, which uh, represents the, the laws in nature, the cosmic laws that govern everything that exists. I thank, um, of course, the four elements that give us life, the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, and the generators of life in these, the four corners of the universe, Quetzalcoatl, precious knowledge, Tezcalipoca, consciousness and memory, Huitzilopochtli, the will, the internal will, and Chipetote, the capacity to transform. Kenyanotimuica, Nehuamasatzin, they want setekpat. They want chico ase kali shiwit. 
Masatsin. My name is Masatsin. I am uh, one flint, six house Masatsin. Born in the year of the house and the day of the flint. And I want to share with you a little bit about my work that I'm doing regarding the tonal mashot. My interest and my focus has been what we know as the tonal mashot, the original name of the ancient Mexica chronological system, universally known as the Aztec calendar. Um, it's been known, it's been said for many years, and we didn't begin to say it, but that it is the most precise calendar system ever invented by mankind. So being that the case, we thought, well, let's try to find out how it works. Can we use it? Is it good for us today? So in the process of the past 13 years, uh, specifically 13 years ago, we began working on finding the name of the days, finding um, the reason of the 20-day periods. But as we got into it, we learned that there was more to it, that it was um, an, uh, something that is alive. So it is a measurement of time in space. And now we've got to the point where we're using it on a daily basis, where we're applying the, the concepts of the movement of time and the qualities of each piece of time in a day to even curriculum in schools. So we're hoping to be able to present um, a scientific um, evaluation, scientific uh, evidence that this calendar system, that its time has come. So my name, uh, Masatsini, comes from the term Masat Venado. It's a name that was given to me, placed on me approximately also about 13 years ago by one of my elders named Tokli from uh, San Juan Tepenahuac in Chochimilco. And the name Masatsin refers to re a respectable deer, venerable deer, and uh, refers to a messenger of love and peace from the grandfathers. It has to do with using your instincts, your intuition, your agility to give and bring a message across. My, uh, my original name in my calendar system is Setekpat One Flint, because I was born on the day one flint of the 20 day cycle. And the year that I was born is Chikwase Kali, Shiwit, the year six house. The house in a, in a 13 year cycle of years, it comes under the, um, the sign of the flint also. So in a 13 year cycle of the flint, I'm born in the year six house. This gives me, using my calendar year, my calendar day, and even the time that I'm born, and the number that, I, that is applied to me now, one flint, it gives me an, an understanding or a picture of my reason for being of my, um, my mission in life, even my characteristics. It, it tells me um, my capabilities and my responsibility, more importantly. It also tells me something very important. It tells me that everything that I need to, to accomplish what I need to do on this earth, I have it within myself. It came um, upon me on the day that I was born. On the day that I descended from my mother's womb, on that day that the creating energies that our ancient grandfathers from this continent, I like to call them our grandfathers, nuestros abuelos, uh, on the day that I descended from my mother's womb, on that day there were certain creative energies available, present. And as I took my first breath of life from Quetzalcoatl, which is Iliot, the breath of life, as I took my first breath of life, certain energies came into me with my first breath of life. And that gave me an identity. We call it cosmic identity. It's an identity that uh, allows me to to get away from other uh, to get away from physical identity, to get away from racial identity, to get away from even religious identity. It's an identity that puts me actually in contact with my environment, with my surroundings, and better yet, it gives me a duality of being an individual and part of the cosmos at the same time. So our work has been to try to bring this message of cosmic identity. At the same time, since we're working on the calendar system, we're looking at the days of the sun as they pass every day, keeping track of these days. We are now aware of a particular time in space that we are living in. And being that, we're aware of this time in space, it makes us more responsible. At the same time, it gives us an urgency. So we feel an urgency that this message go out to all people, to all young people, to all people of all colors and all nationalities. Because regardless of your nationality or place of origin, this calendar system is about you. I think it's real important that we point out that it's not a Mexican thing, it's not an Aztec thing, it's not a Chicano thing, it's not an Indian thing. It's a universal concept of time and space. It's a human experience towards personal transcendence uh, where we're able to transcend all barriers that tie us down sometimes. So in the process, uh, we've been very fortunate to meet um, the maestros, the elders, 
the keepers of the tradition, mainly the oral tradition. And now there's a lot of uh, professors from different universities that have also been undertaking a study of this calendar system. So we've been fortunate to meet the, the people who are in the forefront of the discoveries or rediscoveries of our, of our ways of using the system. So we call it a, a way of teaching, a way of learning. And with that, of course, we, we get more responsibility. Uh, at the present, I'm working uh, to put together into publishing form, published form, um, my study for the past 13 years. And um, it will be based on, on the process of, of using the calendar, from learning the years, the meaning behind the year signs, the symbols on the calendar itself, uh, to learning the 13 day periods that we live in, down to learning the day that you're living in. Because if you don't know the day you're living, you might miss something. You won't be able to appreciate it or take advantage of the qualities that are present for you. And we got it down to hours now. We got it down to a 24 hour period. Um, it's, uh, this 24 hour period I'm talking about is located in what we call the Cortes Borgia. We call it Huehuetlatoli, the ancestral word. And in here we find a 24 hour period where it's showing us hour by hour the passing of the day. And like I mentioned earlier, we applied it already in the curriculum, the schools from all levels, from elementary, from kindergarten, uh, junior high, high school. And so we're looking also to apply it at the uh, college university level with the hope that someday we can go and face uh, boards of education throughout the country uh, and present this work to them in a scientific form so they'll be able to accept it and allow us to begin uh, contributing to the education of the young people. We think that by them learning their cultural identity, their cosmic identity, it gives them a true face and a strong heart. It means they get their own identity. Like I said before, regardless of nationality, place of origin, they're part of the whole. And most important, we find that uh, young people today, they, um, unfortunately because of all the, what's going on in the world, was, um, was evident on television, on the radio, in the newspaper, all this violence, um, all this you know, chaos going on in the world, the young people are really, really, um, we be, they've been dealt a, 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 bad, a bad hand. And we're trying to um, balance the field by reintroducing them to their inheritance. Now this is going to be something that I'm going to share with you on this calendar system. That um, it doesn't, uh, like I said, it doesn't matter where you come from. This is information that is in your, in your blood, it's in your genes, it's in your veins, it runs in your veins. We're very proud, very honored that we, are, uh, we have descendancies of the grandfathers who created the system. But that only gives us more responsibility. And we need to share it with everybody because uh, we're here to share with everybody the qualities. A long time ago, in the year 1521, the, uh, our young grandfather, Guatemoc, spoke and told the, the invader that was present at that time that you're not ready to begin to understand the treasures that we have. And unfortunately, that metal, the sun sweats that's got you crazy, is keeping you from understanding. After that, he never said another word, but he did leave us a message telling us that one day our sun would shine on us again. And we believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that that time is now and that we are now finally ready to begin to understand. So that's my hope and I'll, I'll take you into this calendar system now. To us, not only is it a, a beautiful piece of art that reflects the good qualities, artistic qualities of our ancestors, but also it is a message that was left to us. And it's something that we can use on a daily basis. And, and we've been fortunate enough to, to have kept this, this, um, this information. I think it was kept from safekeeping for, I mean, in safekeeping for a long time, many, many years. And to the time was appropriate for it to, to come out again. And um, I think necessity is what made the time appropriate. Why? Because we need to have a cosmic identity. We need an identity today. And it's found here. So. Some of the most important things that I believe uh, this image can show us, can share with us, is I'm going to point out right here. And I want to start out with looking at this face that we have right here. On the face on this calendar, for approximately almost 500 years, we've been told that this is the sun god. And that his tongue is sticking out because it needs to be fed with human blood and sacrifice. And it's been there, it's been left like that. Even today, they still pass out that kind of information. At the Museum of Anthropology, uh, many anthropologists, ar archaeologists, very, very special people with a lot of study continue to promote this, this concept. And um, for a long time, nobody wanted to touch that subject, but that really makes it a, a touchy subject 
that people kind of keep away from this culture because of this. It promotes a lot of um, disrespect for, for descendants of this culture. And, and, and as, as the people, young people feel that they're being disrespected in their ancestors as well. And more importantly to me, I have found that the teachings that we've had for almost the past, past 500 years regarding the symbol, this particular symbol here, has caused a lot of problems and unfortunately a lot of, uh, a lot of violence, a lot of death. Bringing that in mind, we, we approached the elders in Mexico City, in different parts of Mexico, in Guerrero, in Jalisco, and uh, with this problem. And we told them we needed something to, to unite the people again, to bring the people back together to their consciousness. And they explained to us that, that uh, the unifying factor, the common denominator in the universe is this calendar system. So we've taken it uh, as that. And we present it everywhere to uh, people and uh, students of all nationalities, of all places. Uh, in Mexico, in Mexico, we've been here in, in uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, California, wherever we can get to, we present this image and the real meaning behind the symbol. So, if it's not the, the sun, then who is this face here? The face that we have here, it, it is the face of the earth. It's called Tlal Tecutli. It is the guide of the earth. And there's another, another stone also in the Museum of Anthropology with the same face on it. And they call it Tlal Tecutli. In order, they call it the, um, the monster of the earth. And on the other side of the, of, the, of the room, the calendar, they call it the sun god. But it's actually the face of the earth, Tlal Tecutli. His tongue, that is sticking out here, it doesn't represent um, the need to be fed at all. It's, it's a tongue just like myself, just like my own, for speaking. So the grandfather is speaking to us, bringing us a message. Around, around this face, in these four squares that we have here, these four squares, that all together, they, they symbolically paint the image of a, the wings of a butterfly. And this whole image together is called Oli, movement. It's called Nawi Oli, for movement. And these, uh, we have four squares, and each has a number four in it. It's actually a day sign of the jaguar, a day sign number four of the wind, a day sign number four of the rain, in this case it's the rain of fire, and a day sign of number four of the water. So what we have actually represented here are the four elements that give us life. We have the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, the four elements of life. So the grandfather, we call him the grandfather of the earth. The grandfather speaks to us and tells us, if you want to have life, you need to respect the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. So you can have life, harmony in your life. You need to respect the four corners of the universe, the north, the west, the south, and the east. That's the mission that we have here. That's the responsibility that's given to us as human beings to respect these elements and respect these four directions that will give us life. The jaguar representing the earth, they call these the four previous suns. So they call this the son of jaguar, the son of wind, the son of rain, of fire, and the son of water. And this one here, they call it the son of movement. And it also has numbers four, one, two, three, four. So it was interesting to us when we were taught that these were the four elements of life. I think that automatically took it out of a religious context or kind of superstitious context and put it right into a scientific context. It's a question of, of survival by respecting the elements that give us life. Now, around, around the days, around the, this image are these squares that represent the days in the calendar. In this calendar system, we have a calendar system that consists of 20 days. 20 days, called Sempoali, a count of 20, the first count of 20. They begin right here, at the beginning, on this day here, that we call Sipakli, the day of the crocodile. Then the next day is Eekat, the day of the wind. Kali, the day of the house. Kuespali, the lizard. Koat, the serpent. Mikistli, the skull. Masat, the deer. Toshli, the rabbit. At, the water. Isquintli, the dog. Osomatli, the monkey. Malinali, the herb. Akat, the reed. Ocelot, the jaguar. Kwautli, the eagle. Koska Kwautli, the condor. Olin, movement. Tekpat, the flint. Kiawit, the rain. And Chochi, the flower. Sipakli, 
eekat, kali, kwespali, koat, mikistli, masat, toshtli, at, iskwintli, osomatli, malinali, akat, Ocelot, Cuautli, Cosca Cuautli, Olin, Tecpat, Kiawit, Chochil. This kind of system and these 20 days always begin with crocodile and where they will always end with flower, Chochil. Above that band of days, we have another band that has a number five inscribed in these little squares. These number five, they represent the five movements of Venus around the sun in a period of eight years. Venus, Venus cycles of uh, 584 days apiece. So that's what these five represent. And that's why it appears as a morning star, as an evening star, and disappears altogether. So Venus, because it appears on both sides of the Earth, uh, when the sun is coming up, like as it is doing now, and as the rising star, and as the sun is going down, they call this Quetzalcoat. Quetzalcoat is precious twin, precious knowledge of the precious twin. So Venus in the morning, we call it Talawis Calpante Kutli, uh, the one that stands in the beginning of the daylight. And in the evening, we call it Cholo Tecutli, the companion of the sun. These images of, of Venus are, are very important as well in that each dot of these five dots would also represent the movements, the cycles of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, as well as Venus. A little beyond that circle, we have this other circle that's here, this other ring of symbols that to me I like to refer to them as uh, kernels of corn, grains of corn. There's 10 right here, and there's 11, 12, 13. These 13 symbols, they represent the Moon's in a year cycle. They represent 13 new moons that rise every year. And oddly enough, or strangely enough, they move 13 degrees a day as well. So we have the symbol of the moon, the symbol of Venus, and the symbol of the Earth. So if this is a sun calendar, where is the sun? That's the question. For 500 years, we were told this was the sun, Tonatiu. And we like that idea. So we consider ourselves children of the sun. We thought that was pretty nice. However, the fact that the sun appeared to be bloodthirsty and wanting your blood, that was not very nice. So we had to say, well, that's Tonatiu, and he gives us light and warmth like a good father. So it didn't make sense that he would also want to eat us up while he's giving us that light and warmth like a good father. It was a few years back that our grandfathers told us where the sun was hidden on this calendar system. In the 70s, two anthropologists came out with the information that this was not the face of the sun, but of the earth. Even though that information has, has come out, has been published uh, in many books as well, uh, like I said, even today they still call it the, the sun god. So we're very uh, interested in, in uh, pointing out who this really is, Tlaltecutli. So a few years back, our grandfathers tell us the sun is here, but the sun is hidden. It is hidden for those who don't want to see it, they can't see it. But I believe you want to see it, so. The sun is hidden right here in this beak. This is the beak of an eagle. These are the claws of the eagle. The claws of the eagle. And these are the tail feathers of the eagle. So if you were to cover up this image right here, you would have an image, symbolically, image of the eagle with his wings outspread, and his claws, and his tail feathers. That is the sun. Superimposed over the shape of a butterfly. And they are both superimposed over the face of the earth. So that is a very, very special and important um, astronomical event that takes place every year without fail on July 26. So on July 26, the sun is directly above Mexico City. Mexico Tenochtitlan and the zenith every year without fail. And this is what is painted here, what was carved in the original stone.